better scope for Wessex Blades. Bit of a show and tell as to what's going next week and what's available for sale because I've done batches of Merlins. Um, so looking for my book, um, obviously a lot from Mike, um, Mr. Patience himself. So I'll put the book there, just show you what's on this way. Uh, quick reminder, there was the camp pen knife in bird's eye maple and uh, the fern carving New Zealand fern sort of fern that basically was on its way to, to Mike so my sheaves double double row lock stitch mm. Yeah, so there'll be more people doing it eventually, but it's a sort of standard. I've tried to move on because it keeps the well stable. You know, you start with double, go to single, dark, double, as four points. Double right through it, it gives it protection for the, the blade, which is the point of the sheath anyway. Uh, it was a Calmax Necker. Thick little bleeder. Again. Yep. Sort of, sort of sharp. Kydex. Thanks. The Protean. Look at this. With that Spartan. These, uh, the steel on this is AEBL. I'm still stainless. There's that one as well. Double stitched. Neat and tidy at the back. Loop over, all grooved, slicked edges, and the old Spartan tooling. I won't blow me trumpet too much. Because you know what it is. And it was the, uh, guess the reason why I did the motif in Purple Heart. And actually, the other one was a streamline. This is a, this is the camp pen knife. Even double stitch row on that little one. You know, treated leather, rounded edges, slipped edges. So uh, that goes in a little bag all together. Um, and I come in, 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 in. There's one, got point three, two. Where is it? I pick ones that will uh, keep me in the Merlin thing. There's a one with a you want a tech lock, so I put a belt carry for that one. And uh, it's an old school Merlin. Yeah, I've seen plunge lines and angles of thingies, whatever. Did tube pins on that one for that? Oh, quite nice. That was in uh, my car, sir. Is that a blunt as a spoon? You know. Uh, so uh, the standard that I do, um, unless you ask for something different, is I do a rounded spine at the top. To some degree, it's sort of rounded with a flexi wheel. That end there for the tip is sharp for ferro rod bark scraping, but where you actually put your thumb on is not murder 90 degrees. That's the sort. That's my standard, but I say if you want it the other way around, I'll just make a point and remember it. Um, Kydex. Again, I don't skimp on eyelets. Drain hole. Shiny edges. Got shiny edges on the Kydex. Um, then we had. Um, some old school um, Guinevere uh, variants. This is the idea of using the name Galad, which I've moved forward into the variant of the Merlin. So it's sort of a, a blunt nose, so a toughened nose. So it's just ground that down and shaped it so it's got a stronger uh, tip as opposed to a, a tip that goes straight. This sweeps like a sort of fishing knife. This one goes down. Point drops. Uh, solid brass pins, white car, 
red liner. Got a high grind on that, I'd like to find. Unless it's these etch. <coughs> back. Alright, Jazzy. Hang on. Cuts. Yeah. Cuts as cuts goes. That's one of the a few ones that are in 01. Again, this one's in 01. Generally don't work in 01. That was a slightly larger one. So, quite a shiny edge. Cover of WD. Again, sort of blunt and bull nose on it. Tough and nose. High for foam. Again, rounded at the top section to a certain degree. But uh, the front end is very, very hard, 90 degrees on it. Sometimes you'll enjoy that. Right. And uh, again, don't skimp on the eyelets. Not wrap around its pancake. If you wanted a pancake, I could do a pancake, but. Uh, she should match the uh, the knife, so all of that's going to Mike. Um, a quick heads up for Hugh. All right, and this is for Hugh. This is one of two knives I think he's ordered. Um, it's a Merlin G10 Tiger. Uh, good fun, trying to match it up on both sides. Um, again, rounded on top, sharper at the same, at the tip. Nice sheath, belt carry. Don't really need to dangle on a little dinky like this. Um, and he wanted a stylized H, so there's a H for him. And <coughs> Spartan fell on as well. That's what you do. Um, so uh, there's that for Hugh. I was pretty frugal with the piece of um, G10. Right, so that's for Hugh. Um, and then, as far as I'm aware, oh yes, mole. It fell on. Sorry. Got some. That's what you do. That's what you do in it. Some evil wood on there. Mostly better light in the daylight, but um, am I done? There we go. So it's G10 and fiber liners. So it's bonded and then bonded. It looks lovely, it looks lovely. So he's got double liners and then his fleet. His fleet are going to have the same effect, so G10 liner, then the red, then the wood. Each one bonded and drilled and motion and glue all the way through, so it's basically as uber laminated. Nice. So it's a Merlin for mole. There's a sheath. There's a sheath. Again, no no skimpy on the on the rivets. Let's have a slice. I'm done slicing these. Yeah. So that's the mole. Um. And then available, I've got a message Paul to come back. I've got the Pucos. I'm letting go now. Polished up the uh, the edges on. So Puko. For those a bit ginger about doing one of these, there's a road test coming. It's coming. Cleverly organised one as well. So as soon, as soon as I get the word from everything getting collated together and the pass around, it's 
it should be quite cool. So available. I've got a Merlin in you. I've got this one here, which has a bell and a terminal bell. So you have a look at it shining in the light. That's in Kydex. No skimpy. Does it cut? Of course it doesn't cut. Alright, there's that one. One. Get this the right way around. There's another Merlin in you. That's one bubble and a micro edge on that one. I think this is one that's an O1. That's a new. Slices. What's that one? Ripples. Come on. Got a thin one for small hands. So this one's quite uh, narrow on the scales. So obviously, youth or a young lady or someone who doesn't want a physically large wood carver, this is quite neat and elegant. Finished spine and everything again. Sharp 90 on the tip end, rounded on the top there. Full brass pin, red fibre liner. Feels very dense this ripple sycamore because it really soaked up the infiltrant. I like that. Very, very thin the scales. So, let's get that the right way around. And there's the Kydex sheath. No skimpy skimpy on the rivets. Uh, Ripple Sycamore, generous scales. There's no point having everything too standard. Alright, so again, a one. So, big flat bevel and then a micro bevel on the edge. Full brass pin and red fibre liners. Ripple Sycamore stabilised. Duff it cut. There's some weight, weight behind this one. There's some mass behind this one. You can bullnose your paper by doing bits of fun like that. So yeah, that's that's a weighty bit of kit. So wood carving, if if you're powerful, you've got a lot of weight behind this one. As opposed to a thin one. And there's the Kydex sheath. See the shiny edges you get on it. And um, I'm guessing Paul would like this. So I'll give it a first shout on it. I did a Galahad. This one's in 52100. And the U, the U, the character on this is. So of the of the ones it, these just fell on and it just worked out right. You you got a clue when you start uh, doing the stop removal on the wood what it'll look like, but as it is, oh, that's a cracker. So Galahad, in you, uh, I'll get in contact with Paul because he he shouted out he wanted one. Um, but say so these are all because I was set up for the Merlins for Mike. I just kept everything down, just I've chunked out like nine of them. Um or eight of them I just I just went silly and did Merlins. Um in order that it was efficient I got in the swing of it um, so I got a good feel for it. Um my Kydex methods changed because of it, my grinding orders changed because of it. It was a good experience. I've actually come out come out of it. Um changing things around, um just simply because I, I just immersed myself in Merlins. Um, I haven't really had the chance to just, um, you know, set the blinkers up and concentrate on one model. It got too busy doing loads of different models. Um, so this really worked. Um, the next sort of thing I'm doing is uh, Dane Laws. I've got a few Dane Laws to do. Uh, I've got one for Frank, your, um, your other one's on the way. Uh, I think I've got one for Hugh, I think I've got some for someone else. So the next thing's going to be Dane Laws, and then hopefully in the next week or two I've got another delivery. 
um, and now remodelled. So the actual the, the contours of the mer of the uh, Danelaw, Thanelaw, Boudicca are evolving. Um, as ever, I'm constantly moving forward. Um, there will be a point in time where I may uh, change the CAD count to incorporate holes in certain places for certain techniques. We'll get onto that in the next batch. Uh, but you know, I'm trying to think the stage, that stage, I'm, I'm two stages ahead in terms of um, batch ordering. Um, I started doing the CAD can on this just before Christmas and again delivery of it in the next fortnight. Um, so that's how I'm projecting myself in terms of moving forward. Um, but uh, of the knives, you know, I'm getting I'm getting into the Merns and the Danelaws, but when I get older for Galahad. It's elegant. It's it's lean. If you if you notice the, the, the new shape. Merlins are slightly leaner, um, which just makes it. This is it's elegant. It's lovely. So in 52, 100, quite a, quite a lean grind, and then with a terminal bevel, puts the robustness back into the tips. It's not, it's not scandy. 11 degrees per side. It's, a, it's a bit leaner than that. I'll say keep, keep that. My angle to myself, like, but the um, Galahad. So I'm just using the front third. Cues of goodness. Alright, that's the sort of control this thing I'll give you. Because it's just got that little bit more length. Can take a nice big handle. It's really growing on me that one. So, Galahad, uh, if you want that one, Paul. Otherwise, there's uh, some different choices of everybody else offered up. Um, if you message me on WessexBladesUK at yahoo.com, because of course still my base fury, um, I, I can't get hold of that at the moment, stupid phone app lockout thing that's happened, and uh, I'll get st stuck into the next batch, which I presume is going to be Daniels. So thanks for joining me again, Scott from Wessex Blades. If I've got time, I'll do a bit of a, a film, um, but I'm off out tonight, take my missus to an art circle. Uh, so, sort of wrap it up now and concentrate on things tomorrow. Clear up the mess on the floor. Thanks for joining me again. Scott from Wessex Clip.